And on museum is a way to explore what it means to live today and explore our cultures and how our stories are all interlinked. It means building infrastructure, it means community and collective thought and action and care and hospitality. So this project has come about from a need towards the idea of decolonising the heritage space. Still we don't know necessarily what that means. We all know the word decolonisation, don't we? But we don't really necessarily know what that means. In the kind of status terms it means that your colonial overlord has extracted themselves and given you independence. So if that's the metaphor from a state level, what does that mean in the heritage level? I work at the M Shed Museum in Bristol. So there's so many issues that are raised tonight that are not things that I would naturally just think about all the time, but they're things that are very real to the communities that they affect. Um, so there's like a notion that everything, that there's been lots of terrible things happened in the past, but everything's settled and everything's resolved. But that isn't really how people feel in the real world. Our museum project means taking a really different radical trajectory towards sort of um, culture and preserving history. Being in that space, I'm thinking about doing things on our own terms and not kind of compromising and seeking validation from sort of big institutions that have done things a certain way and controlled how things operate. If you just think about the museum in itself, you know, museums themselves are colonial entities. They grew up during the growth of empire. Understanding of how these practices have traditionally harmed communities uh, and basically having institutions uh, rise to the challenge and, and then negotiate that in some ways. You know, these are things that are meant to push institutions that are supposed to be serving the public good, like, like archives, like museums, like libraries. Well, the archive should reflect that. That's part of the way in which that history, whether at that moment or in 10, 100 or 1,000 years time, it was really good to talk to hear lots of people talking about the idea of finding ways of um, recording oral history because that's something I come across a lot in the museum. And we'll sing by it and we'll dance by it and there'll be possibly some documentation around it. It might be a photograph or a film and there might be other things but actually when it comes to putting it into mainstream culture the singing and the dancing, that's intangible cultural heritage, that has to go in one place and the documentation, that has to go in an archive, that has to go in another place. Really, really amazing event this evening. Incredible to walk into a space and to start to open up these ideas and to hear all the different voices of what um, a project like this could become. I think to know oneself and to be able to connect to a past that is ours and not one that's kind of been fed to us. So it's important for healing, for rehabilitation. I think it um, helps us to have a sense of identity and belonging and that's really important. And I'm really hoping that we will not have that conversation, another generation will not be having that conversation in 10 years time. I don't think it's too difficult to just reimagine and build something. So this is what it's about. Uh, so it's just an invitation to be involved, to remain engaged. Um, and it is possible, let's build it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.